be greeted in the name of Jesus Christ. Can you wave your hands wherever you are? Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. You are welcome. We are in his presence. We thank God to find ourselves in his house and in his presence. It's good to worship our Father. There is no place where we can be, where we can have joy, liberty. Only in his presence, that's where we have the fullness of joy. We are in the presence of Jesus Christ. And we thank him for this day that he has given to us. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that you are here. We thank you, Father, even for the ministering of your word. We thank you, Father, for the angels in charge of this session of ministering. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord, for the edge of fire. We thank you, Lord, for nullifying all evil signs, all errors of darkness. We thank you, Father, for the victory that you have given to us, each one of us, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. As we live under the sun, it's either you belong to one of the kingdom that rule in this world. There are two kingdoms. There is a kingdom of light. There is a kingdom of darkness. As we live, whether born again or not born again, there is a destiny of which one of us one day will be there. Hallelujah. There is somewhere where we are going. Each one of us under the sun, there is a destiny where we end. And there are two gates. There are also two ways. Hallelujah. You don't find yourself in that particular destiny. You enter through a gate. Both kingdoms, the kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness, there is a gate where we enter through. There is also a way in which we walk by. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. So there is a gate. There is also a way or a road to the destiny where everyone under the sun will end being. Hallelujah. And remember that in both kingdoms, there are rules, there are laws that governs each and every kingdom. But I thank God that as we are here, as we are here in the presence of God, we will end at the destiny. If we listen, we will end being at a destiny which God has designed for each and every child of God. Those who, will be, who, those who believe in Christ Jesus, those who will believe in him, even in the future, that destiny is assured. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. This is leading to our topic that says a journey to destruction. A journey to destruction. Maybe you might be here asking yourself to say, no, this is a church. We are in a church. Why a journey to destruction? Because no one desires to go there. But why is it Jesus has given us this topic today and now. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. So it means there is something that Jesus wants us to know. Hallelujah. We are not in a crusade. We are in a church. But why this topic? A journey to destruction. None of us desire that way. But we must know that in this journey, 
what is found, what is there, so that you, as a child of God, you must be aware, so that one day, you may not find yourself in that particular way, where you end in destruction. Hallelujah. Why am I saying this? The Bible says that those who will endure till the end will be saved. I thank God for eternal life that Jesus Christ has given to us. Hallelujah. He died for every humankind so that those who believe in him will be saved. It's open for everyone living under the sun. But if you continue in that book of John 3, you continue from 16, you go up to 19. It says that the light came to the world. But some, they chose to reject the light because of their deeds. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. So we thank God for this day so that you may be aware that there is a journey to destruction. And remember, when we spoke of destruction, it means once you are there, there is no return. Hallelujah. There is no return. We thank God that Jesus Christ when he left here, he says, I'm going to prepare a place for you. Like I said, you don't just find yourself there. Hallelujah. There is a gate in which all of us must enter. Let's go to the word. Matthew chapter 7, verse 13. Matthew chapter 7, verse 13 from NIV. I will read. Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the road that leads to destruction. And many enter through it, but small is the gate, a narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Enter through, the, enter through the narrow gate. For wide is the gate. Like I said, there is a gate in which we enter. All of us. Here, the word of God encourages us to enter through a narrow gate. Why? For wide is the gate. And broad is the road that leads to destruction. And many enter through it. But small is the gate. And narrow the road that leads to life. And only a few find it. I pray that you must be one of the few that find this narrow gate. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. When Jesus Christ left, he never promised us that we won't go through challenges and difficulties. He has given us an assurance that where he's going, he's going to prepare a place for us. Hallelujah. I want you to know this, that whatever God has said in his word is full and final. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Also in the other kingdom, the kingdom of darkness. The devil is full of promises. And you never fulfill any of the promises. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Are we together, church? He is full of promises, but he will never fulfill any of the promises. It's only God who will tell you your end. The devil, the devil will never tell you how you will end. Hallelujah. The devil, he will encourage you on temporal enjoyment, luxurious life. That will end there. Hallelujah. But what God gives you is permanent. 
Are we together, church? Is permanent. Why this kind of a message in the church? The Bible tells us that in the last days, you know the last days. We are in the last days. If you read that book of Matthew, chapter 24, the whole of it, you will realize that we are in the last days. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. The devil is arrested by fire. You will never enter through that gate of the devil. And you will never be deceived. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Can you read John 10, verse 9? I want you to hear what Jesus says. The Matthew you read at your, on your own at home. John chapter 10, verse 9. Yes. NIV, it says, I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. I am the gate. Jesus Christ is the gate. And he says, whoever comes in will what? You can repeat there. I am the gate. Whoever I am the gate. Yes. Whoever enters through me. Whoever enters through me. Will be saved. Will be saved. They will come in. They will come in. And go out. And go out. And find pastures. And find pastures. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Can you read verse 10? The thief comes only to steal. The thief comes only to steal. And kill. Kill. And destroy. And destroy. And you know what? When he comes, he doesn't show you. He doesn't tell you that I'm here to steal from you. You will say you are enjoying life. You use his words. You will say, carry on my mommy, my father, my sister. Hallelujah. He doesn't show you the end. When the thieves come to steal to you, they will never tell that tonight you are coming to your home. No. When the devil comes to you, he will never tell you that I am the devil. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. But Jesus says, I am the son of the living God. He doesn't hide his identity. But the devil, he's a thief. He's a liar. Hallelujah. He has strategies. That's why, during the times of Jesus, he would talk to him. But in our time, what is he using? He wants to use your mind. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I refuse. I refuse. I declare. I have a sound mind. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. When people are living... They live with their eyes open. You are given ears to hear. You are also given a mouth. But it doesn't mean that all of us see. Yes, you may not be blind. But it's few people who see where they are going. Hallelujah. The Bible says that the devil is a god of this world. He has blinded many but refuse to be blinded by the evil one. Hallelujah. Refuse that. There are some advices that we get from the intellect, from people who are highly educated. People who have mouth, people who have ears, people who have eyes. But it's not every advice that takes you to eternal life. Hallelujah. You can fall into a pit through what is, has been given to you or what has been given to you. I remember there was a message once the, that was once preached by the man of God. He says, as a child of God, what are you hearing? Hallelujah. There are many voices We are the children of God. But there are many voices that come to us. And such voices, you cannot avoid them not to come to you. You will hear them. But you are encouraged.
to say, be careful on how you listen. Hallelujah. Be careful on how you listen. And that which is profitable. Be in a position to pay more. More attention to that which gives life. Hallelujah. Pay more attention to that which gives life. But many a times we pay more attention to that which leads to destruction. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. When God tells you, gives you a word, stand by that word. Because there are voices that will come. Hallelujah. But when we stand firm on the word from God, whatever word will come, it will, must never move you. Hallelujah. It must never move you. You must stand on what God has said to you through his word. Hallelujah. The devil is a liar. And all his schemes, his strategies are exposed. You will never fall into his trap. If we look at the church today, I'm not referring only here, his will worship center, the body of Christ all over the world. You may think that people are headed to eternal life of which they are going the opposite direction. Why? The Bible says that the devil, he transforms himself as an angel of the light to deceive many. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. That's why we're also encouraged in this house who we were taught to say never follow any human being. Never follow a pastor. Never follow an evangelist. You will never know where they are standing with God right now. Hallelujah. There was one time when Paul said, you Galatians, who has bewitched you? You started well, but look where you are today. And we were told here that when someone has missed the way, they will never come to you and say, you know what? They offered me money. Do you know people who are close to the servant of God, to that pastor, to that evangelist. Are you always there with them, wherever they are? When they make those calls, are you with them? Hallelujah. Why am I saying this? I'm saying this so that you may wake up as the children of God, the whole body of Christ, Never follow a man. Follow Jesus. Hallelujah. To qualify what I'm saying, Paul in Galatians, he says, even if tomorrow I will come speaking a different gospel than, what, than that which you had first, don't listen to me. Whether an angel come from above, and say something else. Never be moved from what you heard. But the question is, what are you hearing? What have you heard? What kind of advice have you been given? Hallelujah. I'm not saying we must not honor the servants of God. Hallelujah. Get me right. But what I'm saying... You as a child of God, know what God has said to you and through his word. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Are we together, church? All over the world, there are many churches. There are many so-called servants of God. They use this book. This book this holy book, hallelujah, to deceive many. The devil will never come and say, I'm the devil, follow me. No. But what does the word say? 
the letter kills. But the Spirit does what? Gives life. Hallelujah. Are we together, church? But you must have spiritual ears. I'm not saying don't reject people who come wanting to advise you. Listen. But pay attention to how you listen. God has given you the spirit to descend. He has given you the anointing that will teach you all things. So whatever has been said, you mustn't just take and say, hey, because it's evangelist so and so, I take it. I'm not referring to our own. Because the prophet so and so, I take it. It must confirm in your spirit. Hallelujah. Are we together, church? Okay, let's go to the word. Galatians chapter 1 from verse 6. Galatians chapter 1 from verse 6. Galatians chapter 1 from verse 6. In yes, NIV, listen said, here, people of God. I am astonished that you are so quickly besetting the one who called you to live in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel. You are turning from a different gospel. gospel. Uh -huh. Which is really, which is really no gospel at all. Evidently, some people are throwing you into confusion and are trying to pervert the gospel of Christ. Mm -hmm. But even if we or an angel from heaven should preach a gospel other than the one we preach to you, let them be under God's curse. Mm -hmm. As we have already said, so now I will say again, if anybody is preaching to you a gospel other than what you accepted, let them be under God's curse. Am I now trying to win the approval of human beings or of God? Or am I trying to please people? If I were still trying to please people, I will not be a servant of Christ. Hallelujah. A servant of Christ will never preach to please people. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Never preach to please people. No. They will detect how you are supposed to preach. If you tell them the truth, they reject it. So we must wake up, children of God. Don't just move everywhere. Stand firm. Know your position. Hallelujah. Open your eyes. Open your eyes. Preachers today, they are making people to be confused. But it's my prayer that me and you are not confused. Hallelujah. We must know who we are. Because you know the gospel, that which was preached to you from the beginning. Why was I saying, don't follow people? Yes, they might have shown you the way to Christ. God used them to show you the way. But now that you are in Christ, as you read the word, as the Holy Spirit is ministering to you, grow. There is a tendency of people when they, God has used them to win you to Christ. They have a tendency of wanting you to follow them wherever they go. Whatever they say, you must take. But what I'm saying to each one of us, let us grow to a point where you stand your ground. Be mature in the word. I know my brother, my sister, you led me to Christ. But now, thank you so much. And God bless you. Now I have seen the way. I am telling you, many people who are lost today, they followed others. Hallelujah. Someone just said, let's go to that visit there. And they know, wherever they are, that I am not at peace. 
I know where I belong. I know the truth. But they cannot tell this fellow to say, you know what? This is a year of redemption. Hallelujah. It's a year of redemption. Yes. God might have used me to lead you to Christ. But as you have entered to Christ, there are many avenues that I may not understand. But God might reveal them to you. You might grow and understand better than me. Hallelujah. Are we together, church? Don't look to me. Look to Christ. I love the bishop. He used to say, I don't own heaven. I don't own heaven. Look to Christ. Hallelujah. I'm not saying we must not honor the servants of God. Can we read 1 Corinthians chapter 3? I want you to get this right. The Bible says that in the last days, even the elect, those the chosen ones, can be deceived. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God will never change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. That's why even in the times of Noah, people were told, this will happen. People must repent. What happened? Hallelujah. The same floods that came, that killed others, it made Noah to be saved and those who listened to him. During the times of Sodom and Gomorrah, people were told by the rejected, but the word of God was fulfilled. Hallelujah. God will never change. He is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. You cannot try to change the scriptures to suit our needs. No. Abomination is abomination. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Are we together, church? You find people trying to accommodate sin, to oppose the nature of God in the church. No. God will never change. Hallelujah. If you come to church, come seeking for help, not for us to preach that we must adjust the nature of God to suit your needs. No. You must receive help so that you are in line with the will of God, with the nature of God. God will never change. His word will never change. Hallelujah. The church of Jesus Christ, the Bible says that is the ground of truth. Hallelujah. Truth must be spoken in the church. I prefer not to be very close to people if I'm a preacher of the word. I'm not saying not close. I'm saying not to be very close to a point when you are going wrong. I won't tell you. No. I will tell you when you are wrong, you are wrong. Hallelujah. Even me, who is close to the servant of God, I must open to a servant of God and say, servant of God, if you see me doing wrong, please tell me the truth. I don't want to find myself in that way, in that journey to destruction. Are we together, church? Hallelujah. You don't know what they are offering to your pastor at the corners. Hallelujah. You don't know what they are offering. Some people can be bought through money. I give you money at the corners, then I will come and preach here. I will justify sin. No. We cannot change the word of God. We must change to be in line with the word of God. Hallelujah. Yes, can you read? 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 5. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 5. Yes. In NIV, it says, What after all is Apollos? What after all is Apollos? Yes. And what is Paul? 
What is Paul? Who wrote this book? It's Paul. He says, what after all is Apollos? And who is Paul? Who is Paul? Yes, read. Only servants. Only servants, yes. Through whom you came to believe. Through whom you came to believe. They are only servants. Through whom you came to believe. Seek Jesus. Hallelujah. Are we together, church? Copy Jesus. Don't follow me, follow Christ. Don't follow pastor, prophet. Follow Christ. He will tell you whether this is abomination or not. Hallelujah. Are we together, church? There is a danger in you just being a follower, everything you take. Let's open 1 Kings chapter 13, verse 7. I want to show you something. I'm not saying, don't listen to your pastors, your prophets, or whoever they are. I'm not saying that. If you find it, you can read. 1 Kings chapter 13, verse 7. I want to show, I want to show you the danger of you just taking everything. So, Pay attention to what you are hearing. Yes, you can read. First Kings chapter 13, verse 7 in NIV, it says, The king said to the man of God, Come home with me for a meal, and I'll give you a gift. Yes. Come home with me, and I'll give you a what? A gift. What had happened before? This man came and rebuked them in the altar. He was correcting them. So the priest, the king, he was saying, no, he pointed at this man. What is this man talking about? As he was pointing his hand, the Bible says that the hand was shriveled. Hallelujah. If you start from verse 1, the hand was shriveled. So there, where she read now, the king say, says, come to my home. It was after the king said, no, please pray for me. After the man of God had prayed for the king, the hand was fine. Now the king said, no, come to my home. Can you continue? Can you continue? I want to show you something. Verse 8. Hey. But the man of God answered the king. The man of God answered the king, yes. Even if you were to give me half of your possessions, uh -huh. I will not go with you. Mm. Nor will I eat bread or drink water here. Yes. For I was commanded by the word of the Lord. I was commanded by the word of the Lord. Yes. You must not eat bread or drink water or return by the way you came. Verse 18. You hear, this man is saying, I was commanded. I must never. Yes, 18. The old prophet answered. Listen. The what? The old prophet answered. The old prophet answered. Yes. I too. I'm a prophet. I too, I am a prophet. As you are. As you are. Yes. And an angel said to me by the word of the Lord. An angel said to me by the word of the Lord. Yes. Bring him back with you. Bring him back with you. To your house. To your house. So that he may eat bread. Uh -huh. And drink water. Yes. But he was lying to him. But he was what? Can you repeat the last part? But he was lying to him. But he was lying to him. He was a prophet of God. But he was lying to him. <laughs> Read verse 24. Verse 24. As he went on his way, uh -huh. a lion met him on the road and killed him. And his body was left lying on the road with both the donkey and the lion standing beside it. You heard. This is a painful situation. The servant of God heard the word from God. And he was ready to listen and to stand by it. But there comes an old prophet. I am also a prophet. God has sent the angels. An angel to call you. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. I'm not saying don't listen to them. But as you listen... Pay attention on how you listen. 
What is the Spirit of God saying to you? Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. I believe someone is getting something as we come close to the closure of the message. Listen to the voice of God. And I'm telling you, you will never get lost. But many a times, we lack capacity on how to discern the voice of God. We end up entertaining the voice of the evil one. And it only leads us to destruction. One day the devil was saying, are your people who get them easy? Because we, with our faith, he says, we, we don't need faith. If you feel the pain, you feel the pain. The person will believe, I ah, know, I'm feeling the pain. Because me, I will come and say, no, you are healed. But when I are saying, no, I'm feeling pain, you doubt. I say, you, you have received. You are saying, I can't touch it. So he says, that's what I use. You are doubting. I'm saying, it is well with you. Saying, no, but things are bad at home. And there is, there is an evidence. There is no millimeter. There is no nothing at home. But if we say, God has provided, you choose to say no. But here yeah, the devil is saying the truth. As a child of God, know where you are standing. Pain or no pain, stand by the word of God. Hallelujah. Most of what people seek to have appears to be luxurious things, but later lead us to death. Whatever the devil promises, it will never come to pass. It's temporary enjoyment. Is temporary. He will promise you big monies. You will never enjoy. Enter through that gate. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Are we together, church? All these things that we see with our eyes, they are temporary. Never be deceived. You belong to a kingdom. The things of the devil, they appear to be easy. It's easy to get. There is no faith. You can get them through corners, through back doors. But you don't know where you are, where you are headed to. If you are standing like this, okay, let me stand like this. If I'm standing like this, can you tell where I'm going? Which way am I going when I'm standing like this? This direction or this direction? You don't know. Hallelujah. Don't stand on the fence. In this way, the way to life, we serve a righteous God. It's a righteous way. And it's for the righteous people. Hallelujah. We serve a righteous God. It's a righteous way. And there must be righteous people. And those who are desiring to be righteous. Hallelujah. That's why I said when you are here, seek help. Not for you. Not for us to preach what, we, what you want us to preach. No. You cannot stand on the fence. In this kingdom of which all of us who are here are claiming to belong, it's a righteous kingdom. Hallelujah. Are we together, church? There is no in between. It's either you're on the light or in darkness. There is no mixing, no. Hallelujah. Are we together, church? It's either you enter. I say there are only two gates.
people of God, before it's too late, there is a point of no return. Some people, they live as if, no, if I die, I have gone. The Bible says that if you go to the grave, God is there. Hallelujah. You go to the heavens, he is there. Where can you go from him? He is everywhere. Don't think, I know I'm just living, I'll die, then it's done. No. He is there. Where you will be, he is there. But I thank God that all of us, as we stand on our feet, there is only one way. All of us who have an opportunity. Hallelujah. 